Hallelujah. We're going to take a look at a Bible verse in the Bible um, text from Matthew 3, reading verse 11 um, to 12. Indeed, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that come after me is mightier than I, who should them not worthy to be here. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his sword and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the star with unquenched fire. Amen. I believe we all know who that particular scripture was referring to, that that person will baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Whether we can really know who that person that person and the Baptist was saying that he baptized people with water and the repentance. But the one who is coming after him is greater than him. And that person who is Jesus will baptize people with the Holy Ghost and fire. So you have a baptism that is done by immersion in water. And you have a baptism that is done by fire. And only Jesus alone is qualified to perform that baptism, the baptism of fire. Hallelujah. So we're going to turn our Bible pages now to the book of Acts of the Apostles. Reading from Acts 2, 1 to 4. Now, ask, 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 two, read it from one to four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. we agree, we agree. Right. 
we're going to read Acts 10, reading from 42. No, let me take it from 38. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Oh God, anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hung on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. This is Peter chapter. Amen. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and testify that it is he which was our dear of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sin. While Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with languages and magnify God with and magnify God. Alright? So here again, as Brother Barry said, when the Holy Ghost came, they were speaking with languages. So there was something visible. There was something audible yes. that they could identify yes. that the Holy Ghost fell upon them. Yes. This time nobody did another. Oh the man of God was doing was a preaching. And while he was preaching, the Bible says kids come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God purified them out by kids and then he qualified them to give them the Holy Ghost as a seal that these people belong to him because the Holy Ghost is the earnest of our inheritance. Hallelujah. The Bible says something about the angel, the ministering spirit, who are sent for to minister for the heels of salvation. So everybody that have come into a relationship with God through his son Jesus Christ, God deposit his spirit within them. The Bible says anyone has not the spirit of Christ, he don't belong to Christ. So Christ in the believer is the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. And the revelation of Christ is the Holy Spirit. Because he has said, I will go. But I will send another comforter. Without me going, the Holy Ghost can come. So Jesus ascend and intend the Holy Ghost. We're still going down because I'm trying to get to a point. We're going to go into Acts 19 now. And I will read from verse 1, and I will go to verse 2, and then I will take it from 6 and start to 7. It says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper court, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples. Hallelujah. So here it is saying, disciples. When the scripture use the terminology disciples. It's speaking about people who believe. You know, believers. That's why they use the term disciples. Go further. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost? Since you believe. And they said unto him, We have not so much have heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So these people were disciples. But they didn't receive the Holy Ghost. They said they never heard about the Holy Ghost. So it's possible that you can receive Jesus, but at the same time, you don't receive the Holy Ghost. 
All right? We go further. And he said unto them, Up you, oh, we go further to see. And when Paul had laid his hand upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Or, uh, we can use this term again. Yeah, they speak in language, and they prophesied. And all the men were about much twelve. Hallelujah. So, we see every time that the Holy Ghost came, there is a visible sign, or a part of the sign, to tell that this person has received the Holy Ghost. In the book of John 4, and then we're going to look at the book of John 7, Jesus was saying something about the living water. And he said, I will give you living water. In the book of John 7, he said that, let us read it instead of quote it. John 7, reading from 37 to 39. Yes, that's right, John. 37 to 39. And he said, In the last day that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this is take of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, but the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not glorified. Amen? The Holy Ghost wasn't given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So what I'm trying to say, all of the belly is not come from occasion. The spirit comes from within, you know, and then flow without. Every time the Holy Ghost comes, then flow from within and without. That's why they use the term, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Because when something feels, most likely it will overflow. When it overflows, that is when you hear the utterance. But there and then it was speaking about language. Then we're going to go to Corinthians 12, where it begins to speak about the gifting of the Holy Ghost. And. Yeah, 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 it's not something that I No, I thought me that I just breathe, breathe, breathe. Shake your Okay, let's Yeah, man, it's it well. Not nice, nice avenue, man of God. Yeah, nice, nice man of God. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Peace. Yeah. So, as we continue, um, let's go to um, the book of Corinthians. Corinthians. First Corinthians 12. And in the book of 1 Corinthians 12, um, it's speaking about the gifting of the Spirit. It speaks about the gift of prophecy. It speaks about the gift of interpretation of tongues. It speaks about the gift of um, diverse kinds of tongues. That's what Brother Barrett was speaking about with the languages. Hallelujah. But when you go further into the book of Corinthians um, 13, it says, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels. Um, so if you reference, let me see where it is. It's in 1 Corinthians 13, speaking, um, reading from 1. 1 Corinthians 13, reading from 1. Just to reference. He said, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels. Do you understand that, Mr. Newton? So there's a tongue of men that men can understand what he was talking about. Yeah. about it. Yeah. And there is a tongue of angels. Yeah. Tongue of angels, man can understand tongues of angels. Yeah. You know? So let me talk about the tongue of angels. You have a tongue where man can understand because it's um, yes, I'm going. I'm going somewhere. Yeah, that was you know. So he didn't ever really understand it because he was saying language. But he 
yet he was right. They were all speaking with language here. But there's a tongue of men and there's a tongue of angels because that's what he said here. He said, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. When we go to, to the book of 14, 1 Corinthians 14, reading from verse 1 to 2, it says, Follow after charity and desire spiritual faith, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speak in an unknown tongue, you use the term unknown tongue. Yeah. Hallelujah. Speak it not unto men. Again, the first who speak in an unknown tongue, it's not speaking to men. That means the men can't understand it. Yeah. Amen. And it's a but from not not unto men, but unto God. See, he said, not unto men, but unto God. For no man understand him. So you see the difference now. You have a tongue where language, as he said, that people can understand. Yeah. They can hear and they can understand. Yeah. All right. Me speaking Japanese. And you from Japan. You can understand what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Because that's your native tongue. That's right. Are me speaking Chinese and she is from China, she can understand what I'm yeah. saying because that is a native form. That is language. Yeah. But the Bible says in an unknown tongue, speak not unto men, but unto God. Or be it no man understanding, for in the spirit he speak mystery. Amen? So that means that this person teaching in a tongue a uh, unknown tongue. He's not speaking unto man. He's not praying unto man. You know, I'm not praying to God. And but God alone can understand what he's saying. Because he's not speaking in tongues of men. You understand? Yeah. So that, that, that's one of the things he was trying to say, boy. And to be authentic, they speak in languages. So based on that, he was saying, you know, believe not the people.